money supply and other determinants of money supply. The term supply of money is uh, synonymous with such terms as money stock, stock of money, money supply and quantity of money. These are other terms synonymously are used for uh, the supply of money. Sometimes used as a money stock, stock of money, money supply and the quantity of money. So we define the supply of money at any moment is the total amount of money in the economy or the stock of money held by the public in spendable form only. There are three alternative views regarding the definition or measures of money supply. The one of the most common view is presented or associated with the traditional and Keynesian thinking. They stresses the medium of exchange function of money. This is the first view. I define the measure of a money supply. It's associated with the traditional and the Keynesian thinking. They stresses the medium of exchange function of money. Money supply is defined as a currency with the public and demand deposits with the commercial banks. So this is the view presented by the traditional and the Keynesian approach. They define the money supply as a currency with the public and the demand deposits. So what is the demand deposits? It is the savings and current accounts of depositors in a commercial bank. They are in the liquid form of money because depositors can draw a checks for any amount laying in their accounts. And the bank has to make an immediate payment on demand. So it is in liquid form. Okay. Why it is in a liquid form? Because a deposited depositors can draw checks for any amount laying in their accounts and the bank has to make immediate payment on demand. Okay. And demand deposits with the commercial banks plus currency with the public are together denoted as M1 the money supply. Demand deposits. What is the demand deposit? Demand deposits is a savings and current accounts of deposits, depositors plus the currency with the public together denoted as the M1 or the money supply. This is the view presented by traditional and the Keynesian view. So the second view or the second definition is a broader and an associated with the Friedman. He defines literally the number of dollars people are carrying around in their pockets or the number of dollars have to their credit at banks in the form of demand deposits and also commercial time deposits. Here he added the term the time deposits or the commercial bank time deposits added with the currency with the public demand deposits and the time deposits. So time deposits are fixed deposits of customers in a commercial banks. Fixed rate of interest varying with the time period. Okay, depositors earn a fixed rate of interest for their deposits. It's varying with the time period or for which the amount is deposited. Also, a rate of interest is vary with the time period and the amount deposited in the bank. The time deposits possess a liquidity and are included in the money supply by Friedman. M1 plus time deposits of commercial banks in the supply of money. Here is a wider definition. It characterizes M2 in America and M3 in Britain and India. Friedman says it is a store value function of money or a temporary abode of a purchasing power. It is a second definition. He added currency with the public demand deposits with the time deposits. Okay. And the third definition is the broadest and associated with Gurley and uh, Shaw. They included the supply of money, M2 plus deposits of savings banks, building associates, loan associations and deposits of other credit and financial institutions. Here he added 
deposits of savings banks, building associates, loan associations and deposits of other credit and financial institutions with the currency on, on the public, demand deposits and the time deposits. These are the three definitions related to the supply of money. A determinants of money supply, the two theories, so one the first view is the money supply is determined exogenously by the central bank and the second view is the money supply is determined endogenously by changes in the economic, economic activity which affects people decide to hold currency related to deposits and the right of interest. Okay, these are the two views. One view is the money supply is determined exogenously by the central bank. Another view is endogenously by the changes in the economic activity. Thus, the determinants of money supply are both exogenous and endogenous. This defined as a described broadly the minimum cash reserve ratio, the level of bank reserves, the desire of the people to hold currency relative to deposits. The last two determinants that means the level of bank reserves and the desire of the people to hold currency relate to deposits together are called the monetary base or the high powered money. Okay. First we explain the required reserve ratio or the minimum cash reserve ratio or the reserve deposit ratio. The required reserve ratio is symbolically as RR1 is the ratio of cash to current and time deposit liabilities which is determined by the law. Any increase happens in this required reserve ratio that reduces the supply of money with the commercial banks and any decrease happens in this required reserve ratio increases the money supply. Okay, there is an indirect relationship be between them. Every commercial bank is required a certain percent of these liabilities in the form of deposits with the central bank of the country. Not but uh, the notes or cash that is held by the commercial banks in their tills are not included in the minimum required ratio. So a minimum required ratio is to be a keep a in the central bank. The short term assets along with the cash are regarded as the liquid assets of commercial banks. Statutory liquidity ratio has been fixed by law as an additional measure to determine the money supply. SLR is defined as a secondary reserve ratio in other countries and while the required reserve ratio is referred to as the primary ratio. Raising of the SLR has the effect of reducing the money supply with the commercial banks for lending purposes. And, and if we lower the SLR that leads to or tends to increase the money supply with banks for advances. The second one is the level of bank reserves. Every commercial bank's reserves consist of reserves on deposits with the central bank and currency in their tills or walls in order to determine the supply of money. The central bank requires all commercial banks to hold reserves equal to a fixed percentage of both the time and demand deposits. Both the time and demand deposits. Okay. Already we defined what is the time deposits, what is a demand deposits. As a legal minimum or record reserves. The record reserves are determined by the required reserve ratio and the level of deposits of commercial banks. So defined as RR minus RR dash D. If is an explained with an example, if a deposits amount is uh, 80 lakhs and the required reserve ratio is a 20 percent, then the required reserves will be 20 percent into 80. That's a 16 lakhs. Or the 20 percent of 80 lakhs is a 16 lakhs. That is the required reserves. If that required reserve ratio is reduced to 10 percentage, the required reserve will also reduce to 8 lakhs. So higher the reserve ratio, higher the required reserves to be kept by a bank. And vice versa will be happened. If excess reserves which are important for the determination of money supply. Excess reserves is defined as the difference between the total reserves and the required reserves. ER equal to 
total reserves minus RR. ER equal to TR minus RR. Total reserves are 80 lakhs and the required reserves are 16 lakhs. Then what will be the excess reserves? Excess reserves is rupees 64 lakhs. 80 minus 16, that's the 64 lakhs. That's the excess uh, reserves after the required reserve ratio on a deposit. If the excess reserves of a commercial bank which influence the size of its deposit liabilities. Okay. The commercial bank's advances are loans equal to its excess reserves. Here the excess reserves in this example is 64 lakhs after the required reserves. Required reserve is a 20%. So 20% of 80 lakhs is 16 lakhs. 80 minus 16 that is the excess reserves. Here explain a commercial bank's advances loans equal to its excess reserves which are an important component of money supply. So the determine the supply of money with the commercial bank, central bank influences its reserves by adopting open market operations and discount rate policy. First we define what is an open market operations are done by a central bank. Here they purchase and sale of government securities and other types of assets like the bills, securities, bonds, etc. Both the government and private in the open market. With the central bank that uh, central banks buys or sells securities in the open market, the level of bank reserves expands or contracts with what the central bank done. If he buys or if he sells the securities. The purchase of securities by the central bank is paid for with the checks to the holders of securities. They deposit them in the commercial banks thereby increasing the level of bank reserves. Here what happened? Um, here the central bank purchased the securities from the public or from the bank. And they paid with the checks to the holders and they deposit them in the commercial banks. Thereby increase the level of bank reserves. The opposite is happens when the central bank sells securities to the public and to the banks. They make payments to the central bank through cash and checks. It reduces the level of bank reserves. Okay, here when the central bank sells the securities, it leads to reduce the level of bank reserves. Here, when the central bank purchases the securities from the public, it leads to increase the level of bank reserves. Okay. The discount rates policy also affects the money supply by influencing the cost and supply of bank credit to the central banks, to the commercial banks. Discount rate, known as the bank rate in India, is the interest rate at which commercial banks borrow from the central bank. Here is a high discount rate, that means commercial bank gets a less amount by selling securities to the central bank. And they raise their lending rights to the public and make advances dearer for them. Here the contraction of credit and the level of commercial bank reserves. Opposite happens when the bank rate is lowered. It expands credit and consequent bank reserves. Here the commercial banks get less amount by selling securities because here the high discount rate is there. And what's the discount rate? It's known as the bank rate in India. That's the interest rate at which commercial banks borrow from the central bank. Commercial bank reserves are affected significantly only when the open market operations and the discount rate policy supplement each other. The third one was the public decide to hold currency and deposits. So relative to deposits in commercial banks also determines the money supply. Here the habit of keeping less in cash and more in deposits with the commercial banks the money supply will be large. It is the ha habit that is to keep a less in cash and more in deposits with the commercial banks. If the people do not have the banking habits, they prefer to keep their money holdings in cash. Credit creation by banks will be less because they are not deposit with this with the commercial banks. Here they hold the cash in their hands. Okay. Credit creation by banks will be less if the public keep their money holdings in cash and they are not ready to deposits with 
the commercial banks. Another factor that is the monetary authorities, interest rates, income and other factors. The supply function here, the supply function is not only of the high powered money, is defined as and is determined by the monetary authorities, but of interest rates, income and other factors. Later factors changes the proportion of money balances that the public holds as cash can change the behavior of banks and the public thus affect the money supply. Money supply is not only an exogenous controllable item, it's an endogenously determined item. The money supply and the bank credits are indirectly related to each other. When the money supply increases as part of it is saved in banks depending upon the deposit's propensity to save. That's a habit. Depositors propensity to save means that's a habit. How much amount is saved when the money supply is increased? So saving become deposits of commercial banks and it lends after meeting the statutory reserve requirements. Every increase in the money supply, the bank credit goes up. It may not happen in the exactly the same proportion due to the following factors. And every increase in the money supply that create a bank credit but it may not happen in exactly how wow, much proportion due to the following factors. The first factor is the marginal propensity to save does not remain constant. If the time to time depending upon in income levels, prices and subjective factors. Bank may also create more or less credit due to the operation of leakages in the credit creation process. The velocity of circulation of money also affects the money supply. The bank credit may not fall even after a decrease in the money supply. The central bank has a, a little control over the velocity of money which may adversely affect the bank credit. Okay. Thank you.